We're here at the Conrad Hotel in downtown Indianapolis, where 75 leaders of roughly 50 sport organizations are beginning to file in for NFHS Officials Consortium 2.0. I'm here with our keynote speaker for tonight, a familiar face and probably voice for a lot of NFL fans and college basketball fans from throughout the years, Mr. Gene Steratore. Gene, thank you so much for taking thank the time. Thank you, Nate. It's great to be here. Yeah. And, and, and so the first question really is, is obviously no one jumps into officiating at the professional right. sports level. It just doesn't happen. A lot of times that journey involves time spent in the high school ranks. Yes. What do you remember most fondly about your time as a high school official? Some of my most vivid memories, right? Because that's when you first get that opportunity to actually put a whistle in your mouth and make decisions, not from the chair or the bleachers where you seem to be perfect all the time, right. but now on the quarter field uh, in an instantaneous fashion. So uh, the pressure was real at a very young age, but at the same time, it was, it was very, uh, it, it was the challenge of that pressure, I think, that, that really took me to that different level because now there was a personal challenge, sure. right? That I've got to get this right. And, uh, and I started officiating at a young age. Yeah. So the people seemed much older, much bigger, and uh, you know, it was a much more intimidating environment then as well. Sure, sure. And another part of your story that's really unique is that you come from a family of officials. Right. Your father, both of your brothers were both, were both officials at some pretty high levels. What do you think it was about the officiating fraternity that really made it a family affair for you all? You know, you said it, I mean, it was my late father. Uh, when you grow up in a home of a referee, male or female referee, they come home after those games every night, right? Right. So you get to see what a lot of the world doesn't see when an official has a tough night, right? And even at the same time when they have a great night. Uh, I watched my father work thousands of games and knew how good he was in those games, but we really never talked about how good he was. He never talked about that. It was what you were supposed to do, get the play right. It was just your job. So. Sure. Uh, there was a rewarding feeling in the home because he knew that he handled the game, but it wasn't like anybody was calling and saying, hey, great win last night. Sure. So we learned that at a very young age, but we also learned how to be unbiasedly objective in game situations. I grew up with six other brothers and sisters, so organically someone had to be reffing in the house all the time. <laughs> it might have been to see who was going to sit in that chair at the, at the dinner That's table, right. you know, right. but there was always a referee decision being made in the house. But I think what I really re recognized then too was, you know, how my dad dealt with mistakes when he refereed and came home and didn't bring it home and didn't obsess over that. Uh, and it was keeping that balance that really intrigued me, that I watched him on these really big stages. My dad worked Division One football and basketball for three decades, you know, and then you and look, that's just my dad. You know, he's, he's the guy I sit with to watch TV. Uh, but how he kept that in its proper box and managed and navigated that, I know for me, I can't speak for Tony or Michael or Frankie or my kids and all the rest of them that referee, but for me, that was when I looked and thought, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you shine a light. You talk about bad nights versus good nights and, and the scrutiny and, and perhaps some of the abuse that officials face that I'm sure you faced over the course of your career as an yeah. official. What do you have as far as advice for some of those officials? And, and, and aside from maybe developing a thick skin or spending less time on social media, things like that, what, what, what do you feel could be of, of use for officials getting through those tough times? Well, a little secret. Even though I'm in the media now, I have yet to press send on my own Twitter feed. My oldest son handles my social media account because he understands the, that part of life. <clears throat> and truthfully, dad needs to be part of that, but he doesn't want to live in that. I never was on social media. Um, but you know what I think the best thing that you can, you can tell a young official, right? And even veteran officials, because we know when we go up, the scrutiny becomes bigger, right? Uh, games last more than one day in this world of 24 hour news cycle, sports news are on, you know, 15 channels all day. So what do we have to talk about? Well, let's talk about last night's game. Let's talk about the game that happened three days ago. Well, let's fill some space so you can't get away from it. You never personalize what happened in that environment. And the only way to not personalize it, as, as maybe as opposite as this may come off, Nate, is that you empathize with the entities that maybe were unfair to you during that contest. Sure, sure the parents sounded completely unfair and biased. Yeah, I don't take that personally, 
but they were unbiased and unfair because they had emotional ties to their okay. child yeah. or their relative or their close friend on the court. That was why the reaction was. The coach was really tough last night, I know, but he's under a lot of pressure. It wasn't personally directed at you, right? Even if it may have been, uh, I think it was keeping it in that box that allowed you to navigate through that criticism and then listen, every great official, as much as we all get criticism from everybody, and they only look at the things we've missed, every great official is the greatest critic. So I would watch and listen to people talk about three or four plays in a game and chuckle quietly and think, you guys missed the other three. I missed three other ones too, you just didn't see those. You know, what a perspective. And you've spoken like someone who's been around for, for, for quite a while. And, and you hit on another really interesting point and kind of a main focus in officiating now is attracting that next generation and retaining that next generation. What do you, do you have any thoughts on how to entice more young people to join the officiating ranks and then get them to stick around? Yeah, I, you know, I think for any of these young individuals that ever participated in athletics, uh, the only vehicle once your organized sporting days are over to actually do live and breathe what an athlete did or what they did as an athlete is to officiate. Yeah. Now look, some coaches, they do run a little during the game, yeah. up and down the sideline most, most times, and most times at us, but they have to stay in that little box. But, but uh, when you referee, you're the active participant. You literally are that third team on the field. So you can, look, I, I enjoyed the athletic playing experience of being a player of three sports. That started when I was 10 or 11. I played for 45 years of my life, right? I was in a game at 55, just like I was at 12. So that I thought to me was another advantage and, and a rewarding experience. And then I, I really think too, it's a very personal thing. Officiating is a very quietly personal thing. These are challenges that you have within yourself because you're not getting support, right? You're not, people aren't cheering your calls for the most part. So how do I do this uh, in this personal, quiet, condensed way? which to me bridged a lot in my own personal life as well, to be honest with you. So it was very fulfilling and I thought brought things to a real big circle for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Gene, thank you so much for taking the time to thank do this. You. Looking forward to hearing you speak tonight. And then, of course, Sunday, AFC Championship game. Yes. We'll see you there. Yes, looking forward to it, Nate. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. All right.